Okay, good morning, everyone. What I would like to talk about today is Wikipedia and how to study it. So Wikipedia as an, as an object of study. And the particular approach taken uh, by digital methods, which is to study Wikipedia um, as a cultural reference. And what I mean by that is that Wikipedia is normally thought of as a reference work. And in Dutch, that's standaardwerk, a, work, a reference work. Whereas it can also be uh, studied in ways um, different from thinking about it as an encyclopedia or as a reference work. It can be, th it can be thought of um, as um, a number of other things, including a cultural reference. And I'll, I'll detail that uh, in a minute. <clears throat> but first, I want to start off by talking about um, how one can situate Wikipedia. Wikipedia can be situated in a, in a, in a variety of traditions. Uh, and I'm going to discuss uh, three of them. And I'm going to discuss them, in fact, as competing genealogies, as different uh, means by which you can piece together um, histories, or in fact lineages, or provenances uh, of, of Wikipedia. I'm going to talk about uh, three different ways of doing that. The first one is in some sense the most uh, fundamental, and that is the quest for universal knowledge, or the quest for the collection um, of universal knowledge, putting it all in, in, in one place. Um, the second genealogical history that one could make of Wikipedia, if one were, would want to, <clears throat> is as a form of collaborative authorship, or as a form of um, anonymous uh, collaborative authorship, or at least um, a work without uh, a named author. And there are many works uh, in this tradition, some of the most uh, famous uh, books, of course, including the Bible, um, don't really come with, with, with authors. And, and one could also think of Wikipedia, in that sense, as also a, con a contribution to the, to the, so the so-called death of the author. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the debate of, uh, surrounding the death of the author. Um, from the late 1960s, early 1970s, uh, between Roland Barthes, and Michel Foucault, and, and others. And the third way of thinking about Wikipedia is uh, it follows a set of principles um, that you could ascribe to um, community, sort of like try to build the perfect community. Um, and or to try to um, create a form of openness. So open source, open content, open knowledge, open access. Um, so so to, to strive for particular kind of principles of, of openness. So these are three, uh, in some sense, one could see them as competing genealogies. One could also try to interweave them into a single history. But they're quite different. I mean, Wikipedia makes a contribution. Wikipedia both draws from and also makes a contribution to each of them. Um, after discussing this, I want to then move on to um, Wikipedia as an object of study. How is it studied? Uh, and talk a little bit about um, a number of, sort of common ways that Wikipedia is studied. Uh, certainly, it's studied or it's evaluated uh, as an encyclopedia. So to what extent does Wikipedia um, live up to the standards of, a, of an encyclopedia? This is one way, and this has been studied uh, repeatedly. Um, but there are also other ways that, that, that Wikipedia is, is studied, uh, both along the lines that I talked about before, sort of genealogically in, in those particular traditions of openness, <coughs> um, of collaboration, collaborative authorship, et cetera, but also, but also in other ways. And then I want to talk about <coughs> a couple of contributions that we've made to the study of Wikipedia uh, here. Um, and in particular, I'll talk about Wikipedia um, as a particular form of a new type of content, a new type of online content. 
uh, which one could call networked content. Uh, network content in the sense um, that it needs a network um, in order to uh, uh, exist. Uh, and it needs a network in a variety of ways in order to exist. And then finally, as a cultural reference, um, that is to say that Wikipedia, um, not so long ago, has been discovered as, as something that is, has di is different per language. So Wikipedia has language versions, as you know. <clears throat> and if you take the same article and then look at it across languages, uh, you will notice that there might be some interesting differences. Uh, and those interesting differences can be, st can be studied. Um, and that's what we're going to do this week. <clears throat> I have not, uh, I won't talk about uh, today um, Wikipedia as a, as a controversy machine. This is another contribution um, that uh, we've made to, uh, to Wikipedia studies uh, and the project Contrapedia. However, uh, you will uh, uh, learn about it or you will um, uh, have seen it in the worksheet and you also are welcome to use it, Contrapedia, uh, this week. Okay, <clears throat> uh, I want to start off um, by talking a little bit about these dreams or these quests uh, for, for universal knowledge. And the project that I would like to start, I'm not, I'm not going to go back to sort of um, uh, Alexandria, the, 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 orig the, the original um, library of, of all human knowledge. Um, although it's interesting that, um, um, that there are oftentimes references made to Wikipedia along those lines as well. But I, I want to talk about uh, Paul Audley's uh, project which um, started off as, as the sort of universal bibliography um, and later got a sort of Latin name, Mundaneum. Um, and he had a project called the Permanent Encyclopedia uh, where he w wanted to um, gather uh, all the world's knowledge um, and um, uh, in, in a way create this sort of incredible catalog. And I want to show you um, a couple of clips from a documentary on, on him and, and the Mundaneum. Uh, it's, a, um, it's been preserved, this project, this permanent encyclopedia, this giant catalog. Uh, in, in its, and it now resides in Mons in, uh, in Belgium. It's called the Mundaneum. You can visit it. it. It's also a place where there are quite a few, or there have been some, uh, different kinds of new media events held there as well. Because this permanent encyclopedia, in some ways, was considered to be the first uh, vision of an internet. And I want to show you, and normally it's taken up in, in sort of like the history of libraries and, uh, and, and in, in a kind of history of information science context. But, um, but it's also, in its day, uh, was very, very um, new media. I want to show you um, a portion of a, of a documentary uh, that was made um, by um, uh, well, it's a Dutch it's a Dutch television program, um, but but it's in English and French. Anyway, I will show you a bit of it. You can stop that. 